All right, welcome back to my channel. This is Smurf. <laughs> oh, let's start over. Okay. Let's go. All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be talking about Smurf Tube. Now, there's also other names for it. Blue Tube, Blue Hose. Looks like this right here. You get it at Lowe's Home Depot, Ace Hardware, Supply House. The list goes on and on, right? Your uh, grandpa's basement. Let's talk a little bit about using this, where you can use it, where you can. I'm not gonna go super heavy into the code on this. There will be timestamps down below. So if you don't wanna hear any of the stories or if you don't wanna hear any of the code stuff, feel free just to bypass it all. I'm not gonna hit every single code. I'll basically only tell you where the homeowner will probably be using this or um, not using it, being able to use it. So if my content has ever given any value to you guys, Drop down there, please hit that thumbs up, guys. It really, really does help my channel grow. So let's talk a little bit about this. So down below, like I said, there'll be a timestamp. So from here on out, if you wanna don't wanna hear this, then check the timestamp. And while you minimize your screen, hit that thumbs up, right? And that bell notification to all. So, all right. So a couple things. First of all, if you go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, wherever, and you're not talking to an electrician there, uh, what I mean by that is if you're going to, at least Lowe's, I know for sure, uh, it should say pro on their name tag. I'm pretty certain that means that they have an electrical license and they know the code very well, or they should anyway. Uh, definitely ask them questions. Make sure that they're telling you the right thing. And if you're still in question, which you should always question everybody, question everything, you know, make sure that you're doing it right. Unless you have a code book where you can read it or you know somebody who does it all the time and you can ask them. If you don't, you can always check with your building inspector, code enforcement guy, or girl, and uh, or whatever they may be right now, because who knows what people are anymore. You definitely can check with them, and they'll tell you everything about it, or they should be able to anyway, hopefully. That's what their job is. So let's talk a little bit of where you can use this and where you can't, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so for the homeowner, uh, this comes in several different sizes. It comes in half inch all the way up to two inch, and I I think that's the biggest it comes in. I've, I personally have never seen two inch. Uh, the biggest I've ever seen is one inch, but you know, not a lot of people use this, but there's many good places to use this. And I'm gonna show you one that I wish I would have thought about a while back, but I didn't. But later on in the video, I'm gonna show you right here with this panel. And this panel's completely off, by the way. Never assume anything, always double check, make sure there's nothing here, but uh, right here is the cord and it's completely disconnected so i know it's not power so always make sure you don't touch anything live ever treat everything as is hot so um like i said later on in the video i'm going to show you guys a really cool thing that i wish i would have done a while back you can put it in the walls where there's you know, sheetrock going up um you can hide it right in the wall because it's basically a conduit so keep that in mind you want to use the correct fittings you don't want to use no jack leg fittings you want to use the fittings for the product that you were using plain and simple don't skimp on that. I mean, they're a little bit more expensive, but they're made specifically, not specifically, but specifically for this stuff to be used in. You can put it in the walls, the floors, uh, ceiling. You can put it in wet locations, indoors only, when you're using the specified connectors for that. So keep that in mind. But definitely check your code book. Uh, the code, the article is 362. It starts there and it goes on and tells you about it. Now let's talk about where you're not supposed to use it because that's, I think, more important because uh, a lot of people just put it wherever they want to. So no hazard locations. So if you're in a garage with gas all over the place, you know, not so much a residential, but you know, like a commercial building or industrial, it's a no-go. So we're going to say never there. You can't support luminaries or any equipment with it whatsoever. Uh, let's see where it's going to be subject to physical damage. So in a garage, we'll use a garage. Uh, if you're parking your car in a garage and you got it exposed on a wall, you know, that to me is physical damage because your car can run right into it and damage it. So you definitely don't want to do that. Uh, you don't want to put it in the sun. So really not outside at all. Not in the sun anyway, um, unless it is specified to be sun resistant. No burying it whatsoever. I've seen this buried and I was like, what in the heck? There are some that you can bury, I think. This one, the one I'm showing you, is a no-go. All right, so there's several ways to cut this. Obviously, uh, I have all the tools, or a lot of tools, that you can use with this. These are PVC cutters. Uh, with this stuff, uh, it's super easy to cut. 
so you really don't have to buy a super industrial pair. These are the Greenlee brand. I'll leave a link down below to the Greenlees, and also I would leave a link to a cheaper brand. I have both, and I don't have the other ones here, but uh, both of them work because this stuff is, even though it's considered you know tough, it's still easy to cut through. You can use a knife. I'd wear gloves. Uh, hacksaw, bandsaw, porta band, whatever you want. The best way to do it is to take it, open your cutters up, put it right there in the grooves. So you just want to put it right here in the groove like that. And well, I got to get my hand here. And we'll just cut it. And it cuts super easy, as you see. All right, now after you get it cut, there shouldn't be any sharp edges on here, but you just want to make sure that, you know, you can run a file or even a knife and just make sure that you score it and get all the sharp edges off here. You don't want to pull your wire through here and really muff it up because you have this little end that's cutting as you're pulling because that is not going to be good in the long run. So keep that in mind when you're using this stuff, all right? Always make sure that you clean your ends. That goes for you in the shower too. All right, here is your second chance. Hit that thumbs up. So... All right, I'm going to show you some of the fittings that you're supposed to use with this. Where am I? All right, so these are the fittings that you use with it. All you have to do, I'm not going to push it in there because they are a pain to get out. But you just push them in there, and it goes, which you'll hear in a second. I will push one in eventually to show you how it locks in. And this is the box. This is a box that you can use with it. Now, you can use metal boxes as long as a plastic box or anything else box-wise has a place that has a half inch knockout. If you're using half inch, three quarter, if you're using three quarter, so on and so forth. This one's a half inch, so we're gonna knock it out. I'm gonna show you. Not so much in this box, but I just wanna show you this is a box that you can use with it. It's super nice and easy to install. I mean, you can put your screws right there, bloop, right on the wall, and you walk away and you're done. So if you skip from a timestamp, I mentioned back then I was gonna show you how, or maybe something I was gonna tell you about this panel with the Smurf tube. Now. What happened was I wired a house a while back and there was so many Romexes coming in the bottom of a panel like this right here. They were extremely full. And at the bottom uh, of the sill plate on the, on the house, there was so many holes from where all my Romexes were going in. I had, uh, usually what I like to do is I like to put a conduit in to go down into the crawl space and then a conduit up to go into the attic. So you always have space. As long as the panel has enough room to receive more wires. Now, what had happened was we got ahead of ourselves. We put too many Romexes through the floor, no access. So we were, we're not screwed because you can always fish it later, which kind of sucks. But if you have this, if I had this at the time, which I did not, I could have knocked my hole out and I could have put this in here and I could have bent, you know, see how this bends? I could have bent this, drilled a hole through the floor and then I would have access at any given time to the panel through this Smurf tube. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. Now that I am aware of that and I have a whole entire roll, this will never happen again. Now I don't wreck, I'm just gonna say this right here, right now, to go, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I don't recommend half inch because you can't give remaining wires in there. So, you know, keep this in mind. If you're a homeowner and you're gonna use half inch because that's what you wanna use, and you pop a hole in here, if you're going to use this right here, half inch size, use single strand wire. And the bottom under your sill plate, you want to put a box, whether it's that box or a box big enough to accommodate single strand wire. Now, if you don't know how to derate any wires, check up here in the corner, you're going to see a, a, a video of how to derate wires to know how many wires you get in here legally, safely, because that is super important that you make sure that you don't overfill this and heat it up, and then you, you're really in trouble. So I will also leave a link down below to a code book, like the one that I'm using, the 2020 code book, be a link down below. If you decide to buy any of this products that I'm showing you guys today, it will only help my channel grow, and all the money goes always goes back to do these videos. Now, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and knock a hole here. Actually, what we'll do is we'll do on the top because I have a bunch of holes on top which you probably hadn't seen. But if you have seen video on my sub panel, well, guess what? Right up in the corner, there's gonna be another video popping up. That's how to wire a sub panel. Super easy to do. If you're interested in wiring a sub panel or a panel in general, it's very informative. It has four or five videos on it. So you might wanna check it out. All right, 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this panel. Now remember I mentioned it's completely off. Don't ever believe anybody, always double check. It only takes a second to check. All right, so we're gonna, do, we're gonna check together and then we're gonna make sure even though I know it's off. All right, I did mention this is off. You always wanna make sure you check on the live circuit to make sure that the, your tick tracer is working. All right, we'll double check here on this live circuit right here that I got hanging. See the red light? You know it's working. Nothing. So we know this is dead. I knew it was dead anyway, but I just wanted to show you guys. It only takes a second it could hurt and a lifetime to get over it, so remember that, guys. All right, so when you use a connector like this, you have to have a lock nut, so make sure that you get lock nuts for this. This is a half inch lock nut. This is a half inch connector. They made it perfectly, just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in the panel. I'm gonna show you how this thing pops in there. We're gonna end this video. All right, as you see, I have a bunch of holes up here and knocked out. We're gonna go in this hole right here. You see how it just fits perfectly right in there? Come here on the bottom and we will tighten this up. It's easy to do when there's uh, nothing in there. It's good and tight right now. So we're gonna cut a piece of this Smurf tube and we're gonna put it in. All right, cutters, we're gonna cut it. Hopefully this won't hit the camera. It goes down, good it didn't. All right, we're gonna take our Smurf tube. We are just going to push it straight down in here. Now watch how I do this. All right, so with the connector in, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Smurf tube and we're gonna push it in. Boom, it's seated, it's not coming out. <clears throat> with, that, with that whole lot of force, so it's definitely not coming out. And look what I just did. Good thing I was off, huh? I just broke my light, LED. <laughs> and that's all there is to that. On the other end, you would put a box, do the same thing. Knock out a half inch hole, put a lock nut on it, put another connector on there, walk away and you're done. Guys, in the code book is where you will find all your information, how many wires you can put in there, all right? You need to make sure that you follow that to the T. All right, if you don't know how to do that, definitely ask your building code enforcement guy or girl or whatever they may be. Who knows anymore, right? Like I mentioned. <laughs> so you don't want to overfill it. You do not want to get yourself in trouble a long way down the road, create a bunch of heat, and then you're really in trouble. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to end it right here. Links to everything will be down in my description. If you guys want to see what happens next, make sure you like and subscribe. God bless. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. So this will be your... Finished product. All right, let's try it again.